Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Custom Apparel Startups podcast. This is actually take three. This is Mark Stevenson. And this is Mark Vila. And today we're here to talk about what you need to start a custom t-shirt business besides a printer. Yeah, and that, that's really important. The besides a printer part is, is some, I'm, I'm just looking forward to sharing this episode uh, when it's all done, because we get so many um, questions on our advertising and on the website and through chat and everything that, you know, people are just asking for the price for the printer, you know, so how much is the printer? How much is the printer? You know, just give me the price. I don't want to talk to a salesperson. I don't want to go through your pitch or anything. I just want, want that price. And, uh, you know, the printer can be $36.95 or $79.95 or $14.999 or whatever the printer price is. But that is little, literally never the only thing that you need. So I'm looking forward to be able to deliver some value here to people that won't let us answer that question. <laughs> and uh, maybe we can link to this and they'll see that there's, a, there's kind of a universe of things that you have to accomplish based around the printer when you start a business. No, that, that, it's a great way to intro this. And I also want to be sure that we explain that um, when we say t-shirt business and printer, um, it, we can also be, we're, we're also talking about embroidery business and embroidery machine or promotional business and UV printer or, or whatever it is, right? This works for anything kind of in the customization business and, and any type of production style business in general. So, uh, but to simplify the title so it wasn't a paragraph long, we chose t-shirt business and printer. It's the most common. Yeah, it's it's true. And, and that's something that you might use to, you know, when you're talking to people about your business, you know, you might want to simplify it to words that they're most likely going to be attracted to. Like if you primarily do promotional products, you might want to say, I'm in the promotional products business. If it's custom tees, custom tees, rather than something general, like I customize things. Yeah. And, and I, I was telling Mark that when people ask me what I do for a living, oftentimes I just say, um, I, I do marketing for a company that sells t-shirt printers. I keep short, everyone gets that. Yes. And then usually I'll follow it up with, um, and, and any other, and anything else that you want to print on. So if you want to print on a t-shirt to a guitar, we sell a machine that does it, including embroidery machines, you know, for hats and, and polos and stuff. And then everyone kind of gets the whole picture. So I think that's the kind of the, the title of this podcast is that way. And uh, to Mark's tip, when you're talking about what you do, find some interesting things that are short and sweet. Okay. Thanks everybody. That's the podcast. Yeah. We, uh, that's <laughs> so really... uh, that's how we, so that's a good little piece of information that doesn't have anything to do with this podcast. So now we should get into it. Yeah. And uh, to follow up what you were saying, Mark, um, uh, I sold embroidery machines and t-shirt printers for a long time. You sold other types of equipment in the past as well. Um, so people typically are asking, what's the price of the printer? What's the best one? How do I get the best, best deal? How do I uh, how fast can I get it? All these things. And they uh, hyper focus on the one thing, not realizing that there's so much more that you need. Some of it costs money, some of it doesn't. And uh, you could feel a little bit lost after you've made or purchased your printer if you didn't think about all this other stuff. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, if you if you talk to somebody at Cold S or Coleman and Company, we'll, we'll make sure that you have everything or that at least you have that information. But, you know, we've got a lot of listeners, too, that uh, will just buy from what we call a box house. You know, they may just go online to Amazon or someplace and buy a printer or a cutter or, or something like that. And, and they get it in the box. And uh, then they call us and go like, you know, well, like, what do I do now? Like, I, I don't have I don't have a heat press. I don't have all the all the little tools that you're going to need to successfully produce mm -hmm. a product on a regular basis. So I'm glad we're, we're going to go through those next. Yeah. And I mean, here's a hard, here's a, a hard truth, right? I love to just give my honest opinion on things, right? But you're in sales, not anybody. One person is in sales and uh, somebody wants the best price on a printer, right? That person who is at, who's trying to find the best price or the lowest payment is probably one of the hardest people to get to buy accessories. Yeah. The things they need or spend more money or upgrades and things that they might want because all they're focused on is the best price of the machine or the lowest payment. And what we try to do at Coldesi is, is get you the right piece of equipment, right? And um, so 
and everything that goes with it. So some of the things here that we're going to talk about are things that are from Cold SE. Um, others are just other parts of the business you should be prepared for. Yeah, stuff you need to do. Stuff you need to do. And, and I was uh, on the phones a lot in the supply store for years, answering phone calls, onboarding new customers, talking with them as, as they purchased. And some people would be very bothered that they needed to buy something else. Right. Like, well, why didn't I get that in the first place? Right. Um, I don't know. Why didn't you get that in the first place? Why didn't you? (laughs) You know, and uh, and it's typically because that balance and folks not wanting to be upsold naturally, it's a defense mechanism. Yeah, I get that. Right. I mean, you sold cars, right? Yep. Yeah. Defense mechanism. I don't want the undercarriage protection and the window tint for five. I do. I do. I do have a little (laughs) a little car tidbit, though, because that is one of the pieces of equipment that I used to sell. Right. Is, um, you know, my happiest customers, the ones that were most satisfied were the ones that just came in and bought a car. And the ones that spent three hours going back and forth, trying to save, you know, as much money as possible and get the lowest payment and things like that, never thought they got the best deal. Mm-hmm. They were always upset in the end. They, they were sure that somebody ripped them off. Yeah. 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 And there, there's a defense mechanism there. And because unfortunately... The automobile industry uh, ripped so many people off for so long. What? <laughs> for a period of time. And uh, I don't know if that's true or not still, but it was, it was a stigma for a reason, right? It was, um, was back in the day. Yeah, back in the and, and the same with mechanics and the same with uh, mortgage yeah. brokers and all, all of these industries where, where uh, you, if you're not an expert, you could easily be sold on things you don't need. Right. But um. But besides that, what we're here to, so now that we've got that out of the way, I guess, so yeah. we, understand, we understand where we're coming from. We, we're we going to talk about some other things that you're going to need, and we'll just go through a list. Some of them cost money, some don't, but all of them are really important. So write these down and be sure you have them. If you're already in business and you don't have this stuff yet, put it on the list. You're going to need uh, it. You're going to need it. So why don't we, uh, let's just start off with the first one here is... Um, I'll start off with this one. You could go next. We'll go back and forth maybe. So the first thing is just what I would describe as machine accessories and add-ons. And this can be um, anything that goes with or around your equipment and the production to get to your final product. Yeah. A lot of these, a lot of these kinds of things are included in the first level kits that you get when you order a package, like an essentials kit or something like that. Um, so you'll at least get samples or something along those lines, but some of them are stuff that you've got to order extra. Yeah. And, and not everybody needs all of these things. So we'll, we'll list a handful of them here in a minute that are common accessories, but there are so many accessories that go along with production, uh, that you need to, that's kind of why cold is a great asset is you speak to somebody about the equipment. And by the way, this podcast is sponsored by coldessi.com. Right. And if, if you're just running into us, uh, that's why we're referencing Coldessi. So if you go to coldessi.com, you'll see all the equipment that we uh, that we offer and support and train and, and the accessories we, we have for those. But um, accessories you may or may not need, right, are going to be um, things like uh, finishing and Teflon sheets that are heat press accessories. Um, right. a different type of heat press, like a hat heat press or a mug heat press, if you want to produce those. Okay. Um, little, so tools. I, I would, yeah, I would ahead. say that finishing sheets are probably one of the most common ones. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. This is uh this goes on top of a t-shirt, um, or anything that goes on a heat press, right? It's, uh, it's like when you use parchment paper, paper for baking or aluminum right. foil for baking, that's right. what Good. this is. So, and you're going to need that for, for white toner printing, like digital heat effects. You're going to need it for direct to garment printing. You're going to need it for direct to film printing. Um, do you need it for sublimation? Yeah. Sublimation. It's highly recommended. And it's not the same thing for every machine. Right. There's different grades and different types. So you get the right one, but there's Teflon sheets, there's reusable ones, disposable ones, but these are little, those are small accessories that are part of production. They're, con- they're consumable items that you will go through over time. Um, then there's a little bit more electronic items like heat presses, like a hat or a mug heat press. Um, and there's little tools, scissors, tweezers. Um, and one, one thing you mentioned, Mark, that's really important is like a temperature and humidity 
gauge to read yes. the, 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 the room that you work in. Maybe yeah. you want to just pitch that for a minute on why that's important. A- abso- abso- absolutely. It's a sleeper. And you guys have to remember this because we rarely do in Florida um, because um, humidity is, is inescapable here. Um, but if you are in a dry climate or if you're up north and, um, you know, and you run the heat, if you're in an area that gets dried out and you're using any kind of liquid ink, then that, that liquid ink gets dry. The, where it comes out of the heads of your printer, it gets dry. So that impacts the quality of the print and whether or not you even get a good print. So you really need to have a temperature and humidity gauge because you don't want the ink to freeze. You don't want your printer to freeze. You don't want the, uh, everything to bake because it's too hot. You don't want the ink to dry out and clog your print heads. So those are really simple items that, you know, honestly, if you're in Florida, typically you don't have to worry about. So um, you guys should make sure that you're getting one with whatever kind of printer you get. Yeah, it's one of these little things. Um, that's great. And also the the other stuff, all the little other things we mentioned above there are all important accessories. And there's a hundred other things that you could buy for accessories and add-ons. And well, I think the, the point- I, I want to make sure that you mentioned the um, the heat temperature probe for a heat press. Oh yeah, because yeah. because that's super useful. If you um, especially if you do not buy a heat press as part of your package, if you get a printer, when you have printing issues, um, one of the first things that a support person is going to ask is, you know, is your heat press giving consistent temperature? You know, and you're not going to be able to say yes, because you have no idea. Right. You know, it, no it could be a what. manufacturing <laughs> issue where there's a cold yeah. spot. You know, there's there's a lot of things that happen with heat presses. And that's just a, a way to confirm that when you set the dial in the front, it's the same thing that the heat press is delivering on the inside. Right. Right. And no matter what heat press brand you have, no matter how much money you spent, no matter how cheap or expensive it is, um, the heat press pressure and temperature sometimes need calibration, meaning right. that it goes out of calibration over time from heat and pressure. Heat and pressure are these things in the universe that change matter over time. If you're a science person and you watch discovery shows, you know that, right? right. From diamonds to stars, heat and pressure are, are, are bears on, on, on substances. And you have a heat and pressure machine um, so it's important to make sure that it's right. And it will, it can be out of calibration quickly, you know, for various yeah. reasons, uh, especially if it was um, in a garage where it was hot or freezing cold. And uh, so uh, a gauge for this. And if you don't want to spend like a hundred bucks on an actual digital gauge, uh, there's even little uh, throwaway things that you can use yeah. um, to measure temperature. So, uh, so anyway, it's a really important accessory. And it's one of these things that that not everybody will get, but it's really important over time to own this. Uh, and I think the the bottom line for the accessories and add-ons is you should be discussing this with whomever you're working with for your equipment sales um, or your customer care representative after you've purchased a piece of equipment. And honestly, yeah. um, if, I mean, really, if, if a salesperson adds like a couple hundred bucks to your order, that's uh, th- that's not how they're getting an extra vacation that year like right. they're Good point. right Good point. like they're like they're not making they're not like oh they sold you 200 bucks worth of stuff now they, they made an extra 500 dollars in commissions like that's not how this works right and and it should be obvious for a small dollar amount so and the, I would and by say, the way these questions go for wherever you buy your equipment it doesn't and, even yeah, have to be much. doesn't yeah. have to be cold essay it can be um, doesn't even have to be apparel decorating or promotional products equipment. If you're going to buy a new, a new, you know, kitchen appliance, ask what accessories that you should be getting to make yeah. sure that it stays up and running properly and that you're going to need every day. Absolutely. And it's, and it, it's just a, it's a great thing to know and ask. And uh, if you're speaking with somebody who's helping you guide you through the process of making a purchase of something like this, you should directly ask them, say, if I were to spend like a few hundred bucks on, on accessories, what would I get? What, what would you, what would you recommend I get? Or as, as you know what, matter of fact, put like 200 bucks worth of stuff on there. You're going to, I know I'm going to, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. Will use, yeah, right. I like and that. it's just going to make your life easier. And you're, and especially if you're um, already financing equipment or getting a loan, 
yeah. or budgeting out money, if you put in an extra 500 or 1,000 or whatever the dollar amount is, of things you know you're gonna need in the future or likely to need in the future, you don't have to worry about it then. Right. Um, and, and for financing, it might be, if you could add like- Pennies. Spend yeah, this. pennies, a buck, more so, a month. So, and also I'll keeps. give you the, I'll give you the dire scenario is, uh, and it happens all the time. You'll call in to support with whatever printer that you've got and say, my, uh, you know, I was making transfers great. It's been six, eight months. Everything's been absolutely perfect. All of a sudden, the upper left-hand side of all of my transfers, they're not, you know, they're not working right. They're not sticking properly. It's coming off the shirt. Then the tech support person is going to go, okay, cool. So um, it's probably your heat press, right? So what mm -hmm. is your, you know, let's, let's check the temperature on your heat press. Um, okay, can't do that. I don't yeah. have a temperature gauge. You know, um, it's not a good idea to put your hand in there to see if it feels warmer or not. <laughs> So now the, the whole process is at a stopping point because you don't have that tool. Right. And, and the same goes with the, with the temperature and humidity gauge. Uh, you know, hey, uh, my, I keep having to run head cleanings on my DTG printer. Oh, okay. What's the humidity in your room? Because if it's too dry, then that'll cause the heads to clog on a regular basis. I don't know. Let me run down to Home Depot and get a um, humidity gauge and I'll call you back tomorrow. Right. Yeah, it's all good points. And there's so many little things that just remember in general that there's two things. Um, one is you're going to need some stuff right away. And Mark, you mentioned that when we put uh, packages and bundles together, we, we try to include the very basics at least. Um, and you're going to need things always, forever, because you're in business of production and you're always going to need a new accessory or add-on or consumable yes. um, over time. And the point of business is that you sell stuff for a profit that the cost of those things are part of the cost of doing business. And in the end, you have a profitable business, but, but uh, you're always going to be having to buy something and, and, and get something new or refill something. So uh, just budget that in when you're planning. Speaking of things you're probably always going to need and you need right at the beginning, um, you've got a nice list of business setup things you should probably take care of. The next thing. So that's the next thing you need is, um, besides a printer, is yep. business setup stuff. So tell us about that if you don't so, mind. So um, there, there are a few things. And these are things that we're going to say because they're things that you say about business setup. There could be some things that you elect not to do and you may not need depending on, on what kind of business you're starting. And the first one is a, uh, like a, you might need a state license or, you know, if you're working from home, you might need a business license from your county. Um, you might need something from your HOA that says it's okay for you to do business. The government always wants its a uh, couple of bucks. So you need to make sure that you are getting all your licensing taken care of. Yeah. Any, any tax certificates, if you're going to pay tax or not. Um, in, uh, federal EIN numbers. I mean, all your basic business stuff, you want to make sure that that you're prepping for this and planning for it. For one, it's going to cost a little bit of money, right? Yep. So if you're trying to run on, on, a, on a shoestring budget, um, prepare that you're going to spend some money on that. Um, and then the other is just, it's frustrating to, um, you're going to set up to be able to buy something wholesale somewhere. And then that company might say, great, we just need to prove you're in business and you've got nothing. Now, Coleman now Company have... doesn't do that, right? We don't, we don't demand a resale certificate. No, we don't. No, no. At Coleman and Company, we, we don't. Uh, ColemanandCompany.com, we try to be very, very startup and small business friendly. So as you get going, you know, we're not, we're not asking for that, type of, for that type of thing. But if you're going to buy certain items in bulk from certain companies, yeah. they just won't sell. Yeah, to, to, you know, that, for, for various reasons. I remember that's actually one of the reasons why we started. Um, we put wholesale apparel. We put blank shirts mm -hmm. and bags and things like that on ColemanCompany.com, is because um, the bigger, you know, the really big um, apparel wholesalers require a uh, a business license and a reseller certificate and a certain amount of time in business. And a lot of our customers don't have that. Yeah. So and we even, we provided that. Have, to yeah. And, and for some wholesale, wholesale things, if you have all of those things, it still might not be enough. Right. Because of uh, various reasons. Volume requirements. Volume so. requirements, things like that. So um, 
So one is you want to get all this stuff ready to go. In addition mm-hmm. to having um, maybe an accountant, an attorney, you know, anything like that on deck, even if they're not doing anything yet. Yeah. Right. You want and, to have, and, have that all set up. And I would say that, you know, when you, when you say an, an accountant, you know, you, you should at least have a plan on how you're going to track um, incoming money and how you're going to create invoices. Yeah. So, you know, whether it's fresh books or QuickBooks or you've got a bookkeeper or you know somebody that knows how to do it, you should just know by the time you get a printer, you're committed to selling stuff. Yeah. So you have to also commit to keeping track of what you sell. Yes. And, and that's exactly the next thing on the list, right? So the next thing on the list of what else you need uh, besides a printer is uh, accounting slash invoice slash credit card uh, money stuff software and organization in so many words, anything yeah. associated with money. Um, so yeah, you've got to find, um, are you going to accept credit cards? The and time the answer is probably yes. Yes, it's 2022. If you're listening to this in 100 years from now and you ask what a credit card is, um, right. it's like a piece of plastic that you use to buy things and had numbers on it. Um, that was before we did like fingerprint scanning of money and things like before that. Before they put the chip in your in your, in your your palm. Yes, yes. So it was, it was a plastic card you had to keep uh, on your person. Yeah. Um, but but uh, so you need a way to process this. Um, like Stripe or Square or PayPal, or you may even have a local person who does um, merchant service, who has like a merchant service, you know, company um, that can help connect you with Visa and credit cards or terminals that you yep. do in person or stuff on the internet, right? Hey, you know, you know what you don't want is you don't want to make it hard for people to buy stuff from you. There you go. Right. So, That's so, good. you know, <laughs> if uh, you don't want to just take PayPal, you don't want to just accept checks, you know, you want to make sure that you can take people's money and however they want to give it to you. Um, so I would do that work um, before you're ready to sell your first T-shirt. Right. And and then behind all that is um, the other money stuff, your business bank account, um, yeah. your business credit card slash debit cards, may, maybe checks, you know, uh, depending on the type of business you do and, and where you are. Um, deciding if you're going to um, let people pay online or in person and preparing for that, you know, these are, these are all, all this money stuff is really important. Um, and, uh, when it comes to accounting, you know, as well, I, I thought that I wrote it down, but I don't see it in here. It disappeared, buddy, but you need some sort of a way to track your money in your invoices. Okay. Right. Did I write that down in here? No, that's why I said it. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, you would need, um, accounting software or invoicing software. Yep. So a way to actually go in and uh, and send somebody an invoice and then to mark the invoice as paid and to yeah. keep track of it. Yep. And, and uh, you, yeah, go ahead. I give you, I give you all permission to grow into this stuff too. Like okay, you should yeah. have an idea of what you're going to do. But like, for example, if um, um, I use Stripe on, on some of my uh, websites and one of the nice things about it is that I can send people an invoice right from Stripe. Mm-hmm. They, they, um, they will take credit cards and they give me like a little mini accounting suite so I can keep track of things inside Stripe. You know, um, you may not need an EIN number right off the bat. You may decide to be a sole proprietor. You know, the, the things about all this is you've got to like at least think about it and know what you're going to do, you know, rather than get your printer. And now you're starting to look at, I don't have the right heat press. I don't have the accessories. I've got an order. I don't know how I'm going to take the money. Um, I don't know how I'm going to ship my goods, you know, things like that. Yeah. And, and, and then I think that leads perfectly into the next thing that you need besides a printer is a plan. Yeah. Maybe, maybe more than one. Yes. And, and the plan thing, I don't want us to get overboard because we have entire podcasts that are like three parters that go into plans. Yes. Um, so maybe we just bullet through it, but yep. um, go back and, and to other episodes um, and look for where we discuss business plans and niches and things like that. But um, right. I mean, who are you going to sell to? Yeah. I, I think you should really find the episode where Mark Veal and I talk about noodling quite a bit okay. um, for, for a niche market. <laughs> that's not a name of a podcast episode though. It's great. It is in there. I think that's 2019. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, who are you going to sell to? What's, what's your plan on selling to them? Do you have a niche market? Um 
Uh, how are you going to price it? What, what other things do you have to consider in this kind of your plan? I mean, so if you, are you going to, are you doing business just locally? Or are you going to deliver everything in, in person? Um, do you need boxes to set? If you're doing large orders, do you need boxes that you, um, that you buy in bulk to, to send stuff out? Are you going to use envelopes? Are you going to use FedEx or, or um, regular post? You know, how are you going to get your customers the product? Are you going to include anything when you send stuff out? So are you going to put in a thank you card or a brochure or a flyer about your business? You know, what is, what does that look like as well? Yeah, I, I think that's great. And, and while you're planning all of that, you should also plan some other things like um, when are you going to do the work, right? Is this full-time like or, or a side hustle? Um, when are you, do you have dedicated times that you can dedicate to uh, your finances or uh, sharing up, you know, sharing up your invoices, following up with customers, sending thank you cards, like you mentioned, maybe, yeah. um, so, so all of that about organizing your time, organizing your money, as we talked about before, and then organizing your kind of your business plan is an yep. assessment. You know what? One thing that we forgot is uh, you should have an email address at least. Okay. Yeah. Right. You know, you, right. you should have an email address that, I mean, sure. If you, if you want to go the easiest way, you can just do a Gmail address. That's Bob's custom t-shirts at gmail.com. Um, but you know, if you're on the track and you're going to have a website or do an Etsy store or something, you should look at something like a, um, a Google suite, uh, which is very inexpensive where you get your own domain and then you can, you know, do a, a Bob at Bob's custom t-shirts.com. Yeah. And uh, Outlook offers a great service like this. And then uh, oftentimes your domain service provider, like if you use GoDaddy even will offer this, you could hit uh, uh, Wix offers this type of stuff, you know, so wherever you might be building your website or your domain might already offer this service. Um, otherwise, you know, Google and, and uh, Microsoft are probably the two big. Um, I think even Apple has stuff for this too. Agreed. Um, so now that we've got uh, a plan, uh, one of the next things we put in here, it's two that kind of go together, I think, but um, you need space and organization. Yeah. So, uh, so it's, it's funny since you, since you reminded me of my uh, previous life in the car business, there was a, there was a famous world's greatest car salesman and I read his book and he told me about, uh, you know, uh, not asking too many questions at, at one point. And he told, told the story about uh, this, this little old lady who bought, you know, she'd saved up her whole life for a Cadillac. And it was back in the days when Cadillacs were 400 feet long. Yeah. And, you know, she's writing up the paperwork and, and he just says, you know, ma'am, I, you know, I think this thing is going to look great in your garage, don't you? And she sat back and she thought about it a minute and realized that it wouldn't fit. <laughs> so she, so she didn't buy the car. But imagine if she had bought the car or the printer in the heat press, the UV printer, and got it home or that product arrived on your doorstep and you realized you didn't really have space. You know, you didn't, you didn't know where you were going to put it um, and the place where you thought it was going to go, it doesn't fit or it doesn't work right for some reason. Yeah. And, 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 and space being physical is important yeah. um, and digital too, right? So you want to have... Um, uh, a digital space where you keep things, where you keep your invoices, like we talked like about that. fresh books or, or QuickBooks, where you where you will um, store other information. Maybe you're using Microsoft Excel, you've got some sheets for that, or an invoicing software or a production software. Um, but you want to have a digital space too, where you can organize everything. Um, some folks will use like um, uh, Microsoft OneDrive. Mm -hmm. or uh, other folks will use like Google drive and that's where you can store a lot of your documents, um, you know, uh, a calendar, you know, things like that. Yep. So a digital and a physical space are both extremely important. So one thing that I'll, that I'll put everybody's mind at ease. Um, if you're shopping for a, a custom apparel or promote promotional products um, system, then um, any of our cutters, whether it's just a uh, heat transfer vinyl or it's the BN20 for full color, um, all the digital heat FX line and their heat presses and all the supplies and everything are direct to garment printers. Um, all of our bling machines, those will all operate just fine in a 10 by 10 space. You know, I wouldn't want to put three or four of those things in the same place, but you know, you can operate, you can operate most of our equipment in a back bedroom. 
Um, what you can't do is you can't put some of the bigger, the UV printers are no fun um, to, put, to put in there. And also, you know, there might be some venting and none of our direct to film printers are appropriate for like uh, inside the house without proper ventilation and, and things like that. Right. So, so um, you make a great, and point. all the first ones aren't noisy either. So, you know, you're, you're fine doing that. Yeah. I, I think that's, it's for one backing all the way up to the accessories, you know, area. Um, I see you're drink, you're drinking a spin drift. I am. Don't you, don't you remember like when you were showing off yours? Yes. <laughs> I had bought my first one. So advertising fantastic yeah so uh if you're not watching this on youtube you're always missing out on something interesting i know you i mean first of all you get to see me holding up the uh the spin drift and then mark vila does close-up magic on every uh every 15 minutes he does something <laughs> well back to the magic of of the information um, we've got um uh so you mentioned some power and space, right? So you want to make sure you have enough space and you have the power to, to power your equipment. These are all yeah. reasonable questions to talk to somebody in the beginning and plan for that stuff. If you're going to buy something that's particularly large, you might need some dedicated power. If you're going to have multiple heat presses, you might want to have dedicated power more than one. So you could discuss that with um, who you're working with, or maybe even uh, if you have an electrician or something like that, you know, you could discuss that with them too. You know, you could yep. provide them some stats on what you're going to be running. Um, and, and then with the space and the power and all that stuff, um, you've got to have all of it organized pretty well, or it turns into a mess really fast. Yes. Like break so, out the, break out the graph paper, you know, for your room design and make, you know, make sure that you've got everything download a free app. Uh, get out some blue tape, you know, just make sure that where, wherever you are, first of all, physically that everything that you want in there fits, um, you know, think about the, um, you know, the, the heat press and where you're going to want it. If do you want, do you have kids, do you have little ones that, that might be uh, interested in putting their hands inside the heat press and see if they can make a panini, yeah. you know, then, um, you know, you need to think about all that. Yep. And, and then, uh, and then there, there's plenty of other things to think about within organizing the space and, and making sure that things make sense. Um, where you're going to do your production? Is it in the right spot? Where you're going to put your ink? Is it near a window? Does it get really cold in the winter? Could it potentially get, you know, um, close to freezing temperatures near that window? You know, if you yeah. don't have a well insulated, I mean, there's lots of things to consider. Um, if you're going to be uh, doing production, you know, where are you going to fold your shirts? Where are you yeah. going to store the mugs? Just kind of think about all of that stuff yeah. with space and organization for both digital and physical space, because it's it's another frustration from folks where they get all set up and ready and they didn't even consider or think about, well, gosh, mugs, every case Take of mugs. Of space takes up a bunch of space. I didn't realize I was going to have like a pallet worth of stuff stored. Where am I going to keep it? And uh, so just, just, it's all worth thinking about. Hey, uh, listen, I'm going to do a quick commercial for an embroidery machine because I, because okay. we haven't talked about those. One of, one of my, one of my favorite things about the embroidery machines is they come with wheeled stands and you can literally roll them into a closet in a bedroom. Like they fit in a, they fit in a corner. Um, you don't need an extra heat press or anything like that with those. The, the supplies can get a little bulky and the hoops are hard to handle sometimes, but it's very convenient. Um, so if you're going to use a room for double duty, then you should think about that too. You know, get get carts on wheels so you can move it around. You know, just make sure that you're thinking ahead to what you're going to use the space for. Yeah. And honestly, it doesn't matter if you have a big shop or you're working out of your house. Space is, is always an issue. I've talked to so many people about it where they're concerned about the width of the cutter or the width of the printer because right. the the corner that they've designated in a big warehouse, right? It's also full of stuff. So ever, yeah. ever, no matter how big or small your space is, it's important. And hey, here's um, a here's mm -hmm. a great question to ask your uh, salesperson: Am I going to need to access the back? Oh, okay. Good right? thought. Right, because because I know that you know um, with the BN twenty A that we've got in our in our showroom, the ink cartridges stick out the side, which is great. But sometimes you need to get to the back to adjust the roller or something like that. And it's it's a little bit more difficult because you can't walk behind it. 
Yes. So, so, you know, just, just think about that stuff. That's why we're your your friend. You're talking about our showroom because yes. in our planning, we have a printer back there, the BN 20 printer back there, and it's hard to get behind there and it's not on a table on wheels. Right. So it's it like a multi-person thing to get behind there when we need to do something. And um, so we're not perfect. And we, and we spent <laughs> a lot of time designing that. Showroom we did. Too. We did. So it's also a, a lot of this stuff is live and learn over time. Yeah, sure. Well, there's one more thing you need um, to start a custom t-shirt business before the printer and yeah. uh, it's help. Yeah. It's, it's a, uh, it's a plan for help at the very least. A plan for help at the very least. Yeah. What, do you, what are you going to do when fill in the blank? Yeah. And it's a simple concept. You don't know. It's hard to predict. So it's, so it's one of these things that's getting help is a simple idea, but help with what to do, what, when, and where gets very complicated. So I think it's just worthy of considering ideas. Um, how do I think I'm going to need help in production if I get busy? Do I think right. I'm going to need help in accounting? Do I think I'm going to need help in selling or customer service? Do I think I'll just need general help, like an assistant, somebody to fold and box and, yeah. and deliver, you know, but consider all that stuff when you get busy and, and then who could do it for you. I, right? I, I like that. And I would say that, you know, for example, um, about a month ago, uh, the sound on my laptop died. Right. So we do a podcast, I edit videos, I do voiceovers, things like that. So I couldn't work effectively without a laptop. Well, luckily I called, um, we've got an amazing IT guy and uh, I called him up and we got, we got to take care of, I got a new laptop in. Um, what are you going to do if you have computer issues with the one that runs your equipment? What will you do if your internet goes out or if your router goes bad, you know, or if you lose power, you, you, you know, you've, you've got to just Think about these things a little bit. Some of them are very likely. It is very likely that your computer is going to get messed up at some point, right? It is very likely that you're going to have internet problems and maybe it won't affect your, your business at all, or maybe it'll shut you down for two days. So, so it's so much easier if you just make a list of, here's who I call when I have computer problems. Here's what I do when the internet goes down. Here's what I... You know, here's what I do if I have an accounting question. Here's what I'm going to do if I need help with uh, production and I can't finish something myself. Here's what happens when I go on vacation. You know, these these having this list and just sticking up somewhere, it's super relaxing. It's super relaxing because, oh, look, it's problem number three. My internet is down. Here's the phone of the internet service provider. Here's my account number. Let me hop on the phone and see what's up. Right. You, you right. know, rather than what I usually do, which is I've got an actual filing cabinet down here with all my bills from 10 years ago. That's how I look for the phone number and my account number to call somebody. Right. And it, do it it's way. great. It's and, and all that stuff is really important. And by the way, I love just thinking about simple things too. Well, you know, just say I have a teenager, you know, right. Maybe you do. I don't, but if you did <laughs> I have a teenager who drives, maybe I'll just ask if they'll, Hey, hey, planning for the future, would you might would you be down to make a little bit of money delivering stuff to the local businesses, you know? Yeah. Um over the summer, you know? Um I'm I'm hoping to get busy enough where we could do that and you know, you can make some cash. You know, those are little things you could talk about. Um you could talk to your husband or wife or or friend or partner about um hey, what do you think about as I get a little bit bit as we, you know, this business gets a little bit busy doing the accounting stuff? Are you yeah. good with that or, or running email customer service? Just, just throw the ideas around the people who are close to you, who are kind of going to be a, a part of this family business, if it is a family business. Um, and if it's not that case and you have something completely different going on, how might you hire somebody? What would be the plan for that? Right. So um, I think it's all worthy of having a plan because help is something that is inevitable unless you, unless you just. The only caveat is if, if you want your business to stay small, where just you run it and you're going to work 40 hours and that's how much work you're going to do. A right. friend of mine has, has a business and that's what he does. He's like, yeah. I don't want it bigger than that. Don't want the drama. <laughs> right. And it. that's him. Right. He knows that it limits the money he makes, but that's it. Um, uh, but even still, I know that his wife 
helps out with some books, helps out with going to the bank, you yeah. know, even still. So help it help is, is, is always important. So yeah, I think yeah. that that wraps everything up, Mark. That's everything. That's not everything, but it's a lot of what you need to start a custom t-shirt business um, or embroidery business or any customization business besides a printer or an embroidery machine or a heat press. Yeah, I, I love that. And I, I hope this gives some clarity to people out there that really are just focused on how much is the machine and um, maybe makes you more comfortable in talking to a salesperson or someone that knows, you know, rather than just trying to figure this stuff out yourself. Because, you know, from an equipment standpoint, you know, we, we as a company and most companies put put together bundles for a reason because there are things mm -hmm. that people ask for. So you should talk to somebody about that. If you are setting up your business, maybe you want to talk to somebody at um, the Small Business Association about that. If you are looking to um, improve your finances, maybe you've got somebody to talk to about personal finances and you want to run, run stuff by the business about them. Um, you've got a friend that runs a small business and you can ask them, Hey, where do you go for help? Where do you get, um, computer services, things like that. So, yeah. And um, my, I think my takeaway is, um, be sure when you're shopping for something, you ask the question, what else will, or, or might I need? Yeah. And then take serious consideration on if you will, or if you will need those things and make a purchase. And, and it reminds me of, um, when I worked at Best Buy many, many years ago and I was younger and I worked in the camera department and so many people just wanted the camera and this was digital camera, like early days, 2000, yeah. right? Um, they, uh, you need a memory card. You probably need a case. You probably want some sort of lens cover. You want a lens cleaner because you don't want to use your t-shirt, right? Um, these are all things you probably want. Yeah. Um, and then Best Buy had their things they sold, right? Like protection plans and insurance and all stuff like that. And, and, and our job working there was to offer all those things. And there's a level between the things that are optional, like insurance and things that are critical, like a memory card. Right. Right. And, and uh, the, what is critical for your business is not always going to be the same for everybody else. Some people didn't need the camera case because they got the little camera and it closed with the lens cover and it could fit in a purse. Case was optional for them. Right. Mem memory card was not. And I think it's the same for what we're purchasing here. Not everybody needs a mug heat press. True. Right? Because not everybody does that. But if you're serious about it, you probably should. Um, and I think it's really important to ask that question and and realize that uh, if somebody's trying to sell you a box of a uh, finishing sheet that costs sixteen ninety nine, that's that's not how they're getting rich to try to upsell you on stuff. They're recommending okay. something that's legitimate, and you should just and you should probably get it. Just get it. Um, just get it. Yeah, just get it. Especially you know spending fifteen thousand dollars and someone's telling you buy something that costs twenty bucks. Yeah. You know, what's 15,000 and 20 in the, in the grand scheme of it all, you're going to buy it later. Yeah. So, uh, uh, consider everything, really think about it. And I know that, um, if you, if you wrote this stuff down and you consider it all, you're much more likely to be successful than somebody who digs their heels in and doesn't think about it. Yep. I agree. Um, okay. That's it. This has been Mark Stevenson and Mark Vila. You guys have an amazing, well-rounded, fully stocked accessory heavy business. <laughs> Splendid. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Bye.